welcome back to Empower and thank you so much for joining me. So this video is going to be about nursing pharmacology tips and we're going to go over medication. There's a medication called Zocor and Zocor is also known as Simvastatin. So Zocor is the brand name and Simvastatin is the generic name. Um, Zocor is anti-hyperlipidemic. Basically what that big word means is that it lowers the lipids or the amount of cholesterol in the blood. What it is known, it's in a class called statins. And so all of the medications and the generic names will have the word statin at the end. And then you also have lovastatin, the generic name is mevacor, artarvustatin, I always butcher the generic names, so just uh, bear with me. And so it's atorvastatin, which is also known as Lipitor. You have fluvastatin, which is also known as lesicol and then rosuvastatin, and it's also known as Crestor. So basically, statins reduce cholesterol by inhibiting an enzyme in the liver that is necessary to produce cholesterol. But what it does is it lowers the bad cholesterol, which is LDL, and it also lowers triglycerides, but it also increases the good cholesterol, which is HDL. Those are kind of mind tongue twisters, but you need to remember that HDL is the good cholesterol and LDL is the bad cholesterol. So statins are prescribed for people who obviously have elevated cholesterol levels and they're also um, in patients with coronary artery disease, diabetes, peripheral vascular disease, a history of stroke or heart attack. So this medication is metabolized in the liver, and like I said, the use is to lower the total cholesterol, which is LDL and triglycerides, and to increase the HDL. Some adverse effects that somebody might experience when taking this medication um, are minor and usually go away. They can include um, headache, nausea, a little bit of constipation, some minor muscle aches, diarrhea, weakness, elevated liver enzymes, slightly elevated liver enzymes are kind of normal. Potentially fatal complications of this medication can include severe rhabdomyolysis and liver failure. Contraindications. Now contraindication is a really important word to know in pharmacology. This basically means people that cannot take this medication. It means that if you give this medication to this patient, you could potentially cause a lot of harm, even death. So contraindication is a very big word to look out for. But this particular medication, Zocor or statin medications, are important to not give to patients with acute liver disease or if they're pregnant or lactating. So interventions for the nurse. Now, as a nurse, we kind of want to know that they, the patient has already taken a lot of measures by diet and exercise to lower their cholesterol because it's not the first line of defense. The first line of defense is always diet and exercise. So usually you try that first for three to six months and then, you know, then if that still doesn't work, then you can be put, placed on a statin. In the hospital, in my case, um, what I will tell the patient is, you know, continue to diet and continue to exercise, but get your blood checked frequently because maybe if you are able to lower your cholesterol in the future, you might not need this medication in the future. Some teaching points for the patients are to take the medication in the evening because that's when it's metabolized best and do not drink grapefruit juice while taking this medication and to have periodic blood tests. So they may, you also want to teach your patient that they may experience some minor complications to the medication, but they should be like minor and they should get better and better as time goes on. And those could include, like I told you before, the nausea, a little bit of uh, muscle weakness, is a little bit normal, but it shouldn't be something that's very severe. Um, they may also notice gastrointestinal upset, but if they have unusual bleeding or bruising or dark urine or light colored stools, then they need to see their physician immediately. Okay guys, so it's really, really important to review NCLEX questions on all of the topics because NCLEX questions are different than any other questions that you would ever encounter. Basically, in nursing school, they're not going to ask you to define Lipitor or what is Zocor. They're not going to, you know, the option is going to be select Zocor with the proper generic name or what is the mechanism of action or anything like that. Your questions are all going to be real life scenario based. And that's really, really difficult to grasp the material from your textbooks. So what I like to do, and this is 
from my book, How to Succeed in Nursing School, but if you go to the second step of my study tips, it's to review NCLEX questions. Now there's only one problem that you do encounter when you review NCLEX questions and with pharmacology, and that is usually NCLEX books do not have section a section called pharmacology. And maybe that has changed in the last few years, so correct me if I'm wrong and please write a comment. But as far as I know, that is not the case. So what I did was I just went on Google and I Googled NCLEX questions Zocor or NCLEX questions Simvastatin or NCLEX questions statin medications. And I found a few resources, so I figured let's go over some questions. So if you look right here, question 164, a client is hospitalized with hepatitis A. Which of the client's regular medications is contraindicated due to the current illness? Option A, Prilosec or Omazepril. Option B, Synthroid or Levi Levithyroxine. Option C, Primarin or Conjugated Estrins. And Option B, Lipitor or Artervastatin. So it does help to know the name of all of these medications. So let's just go over them really quick, just so you know. Um, you might already know the answer considering the medication that we're going over now. But just so you guys kind of have a little bit more of an awareness of what some of these strange words are, um, Prilosec is basically just like an antacid, so that has nothing to do with that. Synthroid is given for the thyroid, so again, nothing to do with it. And Primarin is just what it says, it's estrogen. So the only option here that would affect the liver, because we know hepatitis is inflammation of the liver, is Lipitor. So that patient cannot take Lipitor. So if you have a patient that has hepatitis A, you need to know that if they have Lipitor, you need to call the doctor and say, you know, I this this patient has this medication order. I need to withhold it. Can I get an order to stop it? Okay, so let's go on to another question. Here we go, question 26. The client presents the clinic with a serum cholesterol of 275 and is placed on rotirvastatin or Crestor. Which instructions should be given to the client taking Crestor? One, A, report muscle weakness to the physician. B, allow six months of the drug to take effect. C, take the medication with fruit juice. D, report difficulty sleeping. Now, I personally think that this question is a little tricky because one of the side effects of this medication is slight muscle weakness. Um, but anyways, if you look at the other options, so uh, B, allow six months for the drug to take effect. If you look at the question, the client presents to, it just doesn't make sense to me that answer. And then C, take the medication with fruit juice. Well, what if they took it with grapefruit juice, which they're not supposed to take this medication with grapefruit juice. And D, reports difficulty sleeping. That doesn't really have anything to do with that medication. So the only option here is to re report muscle weakness to the physician because there is a severe um, complication with this medication, which is called rhabdomyolysis, and that is a breakdown of the muscle that can cause kidney failure. So that it, that is something that's um, a problem with this medication. So you have to be aware of that. This next question is down here. Oops. The nurse notes that a patient with a history of anterior wall myocardial infarction is taking simvastatin or Zocor. The nurse would suspect the client to have which disorder? One, myalgia, two, hyperlipidemia, three, arrhythmia, and four, gastric reflux. So we give Zocor for what? Do we give it for myalgia? Well, it helps if you know what myalgia means. And basically, myalgia is muscle pain, like fibromyalgia, with like overuse, or sometimes they don't know why they get it, but it's basically like muscle pain. And then arrhythmia is what we um, attribute to the heart, and it's an irregular rhythm of the heart. And then gastric reflux is, we don't give Zocor for gastric reflux, so you would expect hyperlipidemia because we give Zocor to decrease the LDL and triglycerides. So the second one would be your answer. Okay, so this one here, if you look at this question, and I know the answer is right to the left, but let's just look at the question. A client is taking lovastatin or Mevacor. Which serum level is most important for the nurse to monitor? 
So the blood urea nitrogen is option A, B, complete blood count, C, cardiac enzymes, and D, liver enzymes. So we know that statins are metabolized in the liver, so we would have to say liver enzymes. But just so you know, the blood urea nitrogen, or BUN, that measures the kidney functions, the complete blood count, is the HNH or hematocrit, hemoglobin, platelets, and white blood cells, and all the other uh, blood cells as well. And then cardiac enzymes, we usually check those to make sure that the patient did not have a myocardial infarction so or heart attack, so that's not really related at all. And the next question here, the client is taking rosoverstatin or Crestor. What severe skeletal muscle adverse reaction should the nurse observe for? A, myasthenia gravis, B, rhabdomyolysis, C, dyskinesia, or D, a granulocytosis. So myasthenia gravis is a neuromuscular disorder. It has nothing to do with muscle breakdown at all. Dyskinesia is just like irregular movements of the muscles. So again, that has nothing to do with uh, t- taking that medication. A granulocytosis means failure of the bones to make white blood cells. So that again has nothing to do with that medication. So the only option is rhabdomyolysis because that is actually a complication that is caused by that medication um, in severe cases. So let's look at this question. Okay, a patient receiving the drug Simvastatin or Zocor should be taught this medication helps prevent the coronary heart disease by A, increasing lower density lipoprotein. So let's break this down. So the, that is LDL. So do we want to increase the LDL? That's the bad cholesterol. So I would say that is no. Option B, controlling lower density lipoprotein. So controlling the LDLs, that is a good option. Um, Option C is increasing the triglycerides. The triglycerides can also be a problem, so we do not want to increase those. And then option D is increasing very low density lipoprotein, but there, again, you're still talking about LDL. So the only option would be option B. It also helps to know what the normal or what the liver enzymes are. So the liver enzymes are AST and ALT and the normal levels are AST 8 to 48 and ALT 7 to 55 and that's both measured in units per liter. So guys I just want to show you a way to make pharmacology less foreign. You have all kinds of resources at your fingertips. These are all free resources that I found online in 10 minutes. So it's really important to get yourself to think in question mode. I'm going to put the link to all of these below in the description section. All right, guys, I really hope you found this helpful. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. And please subscribe to the channel and share with friends. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon. Love you. Bye.